Hey guys, my name is Gia and I just love to eat, laugh and lift. Welcome. Today guys, I am covering the things you need to prepare for before you do a bodybuilding show. I'm not going to go into nutrition and workouts and all those things, the thing that the things that take 6 months, 9 months, a year to prepare, you know, the actual working out and building your muscle part, but more so I'm going to cover the what you're doing to actually make sure that you're registered for this show, that you have a hotel and all those little um, nitty gritties that you need to know and consider before you actually step on stage. So without consideration of actual workouts and nutrition, guys, let's just go and get ahead and get started. I have a pretty healthy list in front of me. I'm just going to go through it and ramble. And if I find anything else to inset, in, inject, I'm going to inject it. <laughs> okay. So first and foremost, guys, the one thing, that, the first thing that you guys have to really think about first is the federation and the shows that you want to join because you are going to have to register for it. The federations that I have um, experience with is INBF, which is the amateur version of WNBF, and NPC, which is the amateur version IFBB. So you'll hear me refer to those guys probably a lot. So registering for those federations, I first competed in NPC because it was the bigger federation, um, but it's not a drug tested federation. And then so I competed in INBF because that is a drug tested federation for natural athletes. So um, what you have to know guys is you have to register for a couple of things. First, you have to register for the actual federation itself, INBF, um, NPC, et cetera. Those are annual registration so for example with INBF the registration is $74 a year with NPC the registration is $125 a year so depending on the federation as well the costs will differ the other thing that you guys have to know that you're registering for too is the classes that you're going to be competing in. So first, let's think about the, the hierarchy of this, right? So there's the overall federation. Let's say it's INBF, right? Then there are the categories of what you wanna compete for, whether it's fit body or figure or bodybuilding, bodybuilding, although is the name of the sport, it's also a category. Um, bikini, right? And then there are the classes. So depending on how big that competition is, the the organizers might have different types of classes. So for example, figure open, which is anybody can join, or maybe figures masters for anybody of this age and higher. So those are the things that you want to register for as well. My personal take is if you're going to do a bodybuilding show, do as many classes as you can. If they let you register for open and they let you register for short at the same time, you yeah, might as well do it. There are going to be um, separate registration costs or there are registration costs for each of the classes. So with INBF, I just pulled up whatever they have online today. This may not be the most current one when you guys are watching this video. But for example, if you join one woman's class, it's 70 bucks. If you join two women's classes, it's $115. With NPC, I can't see the NPC costs for each of the classes online right now, but um, the idea, guys, is you have to you have to register for each class, and that is a one-time payment for that particular competition. That is not access to you to join a class um, year-round across multiple shows. And in fact, guys, a lot of times the organizers of the shows are different people. So. Again, you'll have to register for the federation itself, and then every time you want to do a show, you'll have to register for the different classes. The other thing that you guys want to think of well in advance, especially for the women, is the suit that you're going to wear for the competition. When you decide what category you want to compete in, start looking at the suits that are available. Men are usually in shorts, war shorts, or in briefs, depending on the category, guys, that you're competing in. Women, there are two, usually two kinds of bikini cuts that are used. Um, look up the federation that you're competing in because the rules will be may be different across federations. But for for usually the cut for the bikini category is different than the cut for the um, figure and fit body and bodybuilding category. Those last three that I um, referenced typically have the same bikini cut. So. 
while you guys won't know your exact measurements before you closer to when you hop on while you guys won't know your exact measurements like let's say six months out before the show it's really good for you guys to start looking at your bikinis because a lot of times you can buy them custom and bikinis themselves can range and they are actually really hefty now if you're okay with borrowing somebody else's bikini go for it i personally am uh, <laughs> i can't borrow somebody's bikini just because i <laughs> i just personally don't and want to um but bikinis can range anywhere from if you're lucky about 200 bucks thousands and thousands of dollars i bought mine off of etsy.com um and um you can you have you just have a lot of options so take a look at that when you're looking for bikini girls um sparkle is an important deal so whether or not you buy a plain bikini and then bedazzle it yourself or you buy it pre-sparkled um that's all up to you the reason why bedazzling is important is because the stage lights are super super strong and the majority of the girls are going to have some pretty bedazzled bikinis so you don't want to be the one that looks dull on stage so when it comes to being months out to a competition the other things that you guys want to start thinking about is where you're going to stay and are the things that you might have to register for for the actual show so mm, let's start for the other things that you have to register for or maybe sign up for or pay for right so the other thing is tanning so most of the time the federations will have a vendor a tanning vendor and a photography and videographer um, for the show make sure to sign up for those especially when the tanning guys you have to um, schedule and be slotted in um, and you want to get a good time slot because you don't want to be the person that's getting their first base coat tan at 10 p.m the day before when you have to wake up super early the next day so make sure to get those scheduled in. and usually that's a, a, an additional cost. Can you buy the tanning that's maybe on the store, the competition tan at a store? Yeah, absolutely. Apply it yourself. But the majority of the competitors are going to use the tanning vendor from the Federation. And you might have a tan that's completely different and maybe not as of high quality or maybe you don't apply it the same way. But... Um, or as evenly so those are options that you guys have now other things that you guys have to prepare for is where you're going to stay so it's good for you to have a place to sleep that's pretty close to the location because you don't want to be you don't want to drive far away the day of or maybe get stuck in traffic that mm -mm, ain't nobody got time for that you prepared a whole year you're not gonna miss a show because of some dang traffic but when you guys do um, book a place to stay or stay at a friend's house bring your own blankets bring your own pillowcases bring your own towels the reason being is you're going to get a tan your first base coat the day before the competition and you're going to have to sleep i also recommend that you sleep in long pants and a long sleeve shirt and socks so that you minimize um, the amount of um scratching off of tan or maybe actually accidentally getting drool on yourself while you sleep and your tan comes off and has like a drool mark um but bring your own blankets and pillows because your tan will rub off a little bit and you don't want to be responsible for cleaning up your mess or um having to pay the fees to replace the stuff that you ruined and it's just respectful that way right the day right before the show there are a few important things that are going to happen Typically, there is a athlete meeting where all the athletes come over and maybe it's in the afternoon or evening, pay attention to whatever schedule they send to you. That's when they tell you kind of the cadence of the show, how much time you might have on stage, how many competitors there are. You might even learn the sizes of the classes and those that are your, that you're competing with. And then you'll just get to meet some really awesome people. So make sure to be there for the athlete meeting. Do not miss out on it. That day as well, the day before, you are going to get your first base coat of tan. And that day as well, you are going to check in likely before your athlete meeting. It's just to verify that, hey, I am a competitor and I'm here. <laughs> then there's the day of the show. So the day of the show, you guys are likely, at least I do, wake up around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. if you're a girl and you want to get your hair done at a dry bar the day before, I totally recommend it. You don't have to, um, but you'll just spend time the day before the, the day of kind of just doing your hair and your makeup. Um, so you'll want to wake up, especially for the girls, to 
to to wake up earlier and, and get prepared because while it is a bodybuilding show we are also judged on our makeup our presence and uh the majority of the females and women will have jewelry so um look at competitions online maybe look at it on youtube look through my instagram see the jewelry that i wore and um get some jewelry it doesn't have to be expensive jewelry it could be um, cheapy cheapy jewelry that you buy for something from like Claire's or Walmart or something just as long as it's blingy and it doesn't drown you or that you have enough jewelry that it keeps you in par with the rest of the the other women on on stage um, but not so much jewelry that it's just so distracting right that that day of competition as well after you're ready you guys are gonna go over to the competition venue that's where you're going to get your second um, coat of tan the morning before. So make sure to look at the tanning people's schedule and just make sure that you're there um, at the appropriate time because you'll probably want your tan maybe 30 minutes before you hop on stage for the first time. They will also likely have what's called bikini bite or glue for the women especially where because our, our bikinis have a tendency to move, it's just glue that you put onto yourselves. Um, to, to keep it from moving for to keep from too much cheek um, showing on the stage. I have to give you guys a fair warning. The tan smells bad. So if you like the onion, uh, the smell of onions and BO, then maybe it doesn't smell bad to you, but I don't normally have BO and it just smells disgusting. Like I sit there and I'm like, and I don't, I don't, it's not, it's not me. It's just, the tan, it smells, it's just, it's gross. So just be aware of that. Um, but the one thing that you guys have to think about is don't think about masking it with, trying to mask it with perfume or putting deodorants on because the pH balance of those chemicals may interfere with the tan itself. What I'd recommend for you guys is maybe put um, some perfume or some cologne on your shirt, for example, so that you can smell that instead of actually putting it on your skin. Other things you guys you guys will want to have available to you the day of is obviously your food. The majority of people eat rice cakes and peanut butter and water, um, some other foods, depending on just all on how your body responds to food and you know what you'll need for a good pump that day. Work with your coach on it um, and um, make sure to have that prepared for before you before before the day before or earlier uh, of competition day. Also make sure that. Um, have something to pump with usually just some resistance bands are enough because you guys are gonna be so tired That all you need to do to get blood into your muscles anyways is just some resistance bands Don't think about bringing in 25 pound dumbbells. I have brought 15 pound dumbbells with me in the past It's just not even worth it. I lifted it like maybe for like 10 15 curdles and the rest of the day I was like a Resistance bands it is a lot of the times the federations may have something for you But just in case they don't or maybe they're all taken by other athletes then you have your own so a couple of other a couple of other things that I personally love to have guys is a portable electric desk fan. I bought mine off of Amazon. You can recharge it. It's not one of those handheld fans or like this. Um, it's an actual little desk fan. It's about this big. I get if it's hot, I don't want to be sweating. So I'll, or maybe if I'm putting my makeup on and the lights are so bright that it's hot, um, a desk fan is just amazing to have. And I also love to have wireless earbuds that don't interfere with my hair or my makeup because I just like to zone out and just get my, you know, <laughs> have my own pump in my head um, while the rest of the, the classes are going out. When it comes to the competition itself, guys, there are typically two times that you're going to go on stage per class. So there is always a pre-judging, um, which typically starts in the morning. Um, where all of the classes will go and the judges are all there. That's basically when they decide who the winner is. Then there's going to be the finals show, which maybe depending on how, you know, the the competition is laid out, it may be an hour after prejudging and maybe four hours after prejudging. You kind of never know. You kind of just have to wing it. But the prejudging is you're doing all of your poses, bring your A game to both of them, right? To prejudging and finals. Um, because again, they they pretty much kind of decide who they think are the top athletes at prejudging, and finals is more so for um, more show and more glamour. And there's a minor chance that they may change who 
they think is um, the top athlete. Very rarely does it happen, but it can. So bring your A game to both of those. After the finals though, guys, you're gonna have some adrenaline uh, getting off of stage and then you're likely gonna be wanting to eat a ton. Don't, don't gorge so much that you wake up the next day super, super swollen. Um, but have some fun, eat, and, and just enjoy the moment. Uh, every federation, by the way, is super different, whether or not you guys get, um, what are those things? Oh my goodness, the name escapes me. You know, little statues here. <laughs> here's your first place, here's your second place, or medals, trophy. <laughs> trophy or medal, so it all depends on how the federation works, guys. Um, but I hope that was helpful, guys. If you've competed in the past and you think um, there's another tip that you want people to know, um, or if there's a maybe a favorite tip that you guys have heard on this video, put it in the comments below. I always want to hear from you guys and let you know, let find out what you guys think is helpful that I'm sharing for you guys because every piece of content that I make, guys, is only because you request it. So thank you for requesting this piece of content, guys. Um, I do now have a Twitter account if you guys uh, want to post, retweet this video out on Twitter. <laughs> You may get a shout out in the next video, guys. Um, thanks so much, guys. If you do like this content and you think this kind of stuff is helpful, give this video a like, a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this mug, hit the subscribe button. There's a notification right there. Ding, ding, ding. Notification bell right there. Ding, 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 ding. Every time this baby gorilla posts a video, I'm really failing at this. And if you guys aren't already following me on social, feel free to do so if you want to. Alright guys, have a great day. See ya!